Today's question comes from Mike in Las Vegas, Nevada. Dave, I understand the concept of an ocean wireless products, but could you give me an, an example of a practical application or a building project where an ocean products would save money? Yes. Uh, we installed an ocean products in our offices here at Alps Controls. We're standing in the hallway of our sales and marketing department, and in these offices, which we recently renovated to include a VAV box in each office, we've installed an ocean products to do both the temperature control and the lighting control. I'd like to take you down and show you one of them uh, that's uh, unoccupied right now. Let me show you how the product works. Uh, we're using a can to go DDC controller on the VAV box. can to go is a product that has both wireless technology and wired inputs on both on the board. Um, so some of the products that we use, we use this an ocean wireless and others are wired to the to the controller. And we're in Barry's office. This is one of our standard offices and we did both the lighting control and the HVAC control in here using wireless technology on a little bit of both of it, quite a bit actually. Um, the lights in here are LED bulbs in standard incandescent fixtures. So we just replaced the bulbs with an LED bulb. These bulbs are supposed to last 20 years and they're about one fourth the energy of a standard incandescent bulb. So this room is being lit with a total of 80 watts of uh, power. Uh, we put in a skylight in the center of the office, one of those sky tubes. It's bringing light in from the sun and that light's coming into the room in a, in a pretty bright white color, uh, about 5,500 Kelvins. We match the LED lights to match that so the color of the room is well balanced to be outdoor lighting. Um, the lights in the control room are controlled with an occupancy sensor and this is wireless. <laughs> this is in an ocean powered occupancy sensor. It gets its power from the sunlight and the, and the, the uh, LED lights coming in the room. It charges. I think it's good for three days of charge in complete darkness. And when someone walks into the room, it turns the lights on, turns off. Works as a standard occupancy sensor, but no wiring required. Occupancy sensors are one of the most difficult sensors to install in the building because you don't know where you're going to get problems with motion that might not be relevant to someone being in the room. These rooms have glass panels next to them. If we mounted the occupancy sensor in the wrong direction, we might be turning the lights on and off every time someone walks past. If we had made that mistake with a wired sensor, it would be an expensive repair to change. So with wireless, we can test this product, moving to different spots around the office and deciding where we want to put it. This wirelessly communicates to the can to go controller up above the ceiling uh, with no wires required. In addition to the occupancy sensor, we're measuring the light level in the room with an ocean enabled light level sensor. We're maintaining 200 lumens in this room and that can be adjusted uh, on the DDC controller. Uh, but that's wireless. There's no wires between there and the can to go controller. In addition to that, the temperature sensor in this room is wireless. And it's got, it's measuring temperature and a set point adjust. Uh, to change the temperature in the room, let the occupant decide his own temperature. It receives its power from this solar strip on the side. Once it's charged, it's good for about seven days in darkness. But this can be placed wherever you want. Uh, the old concept of sticking the temperature sensor on the wall by the door, because that was the easiest place to wire, might not hold true anymore. You might want the temperature sensor on your desk, because that's where you want to read the 70 degrees or measure 70 degrees uh, for your desk. We used an electrician to install the power wiring to the, to the DDC controller um, and an electrician to install the discharge air temperature sensor and wire to the reheat valve. All the other sensors in the space, we let the occupant, each office, install his own sensors because it was only a matter of velcroing them or just placing them in the room. So we've got a fairly sophisticated level of control with lighting and DDC at a very, very inexpensive cost to install. That's what we did here. So I'd like to show you what we did in our kitchen. This is a recently renovated space and the goal was to try to make this look more like an atrium area than a kitchen. We were stuck with the kitchen being in the middle of our building and you've got to walk from one side to the other. So we didn't want to cut through the kitchen so we tried to change it into an outdoor cafe atrium type space. So we put in skylights, LED, uh, sunlight color LED bulbs. We put in several skylights in the room and uh, the intent was to try to make this a very bright area. So these are controlled by light level sensors. We don't have occupancy in there. 
but the, 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 the turning the lights on and off we did with uh, an ocean wireless switches. And we wanted those on both sides of the doorway, and there's two doorways going through the kitchen. So here's our temperature sensor for this VAV zone, and these are the light switches that turn the lights on and off. And as you can see, these are just Velcro to the wall. There's no wiring on these. Um, so we were able to put in four-way switches in this kitchen, which if you were going to wire that would be a little bit complicated. But with these, you can put in as many switches you want, controlling as many lights. Uh, there's no complication. There's no wire. Very inexpensive to do. I think, if we, I think we accomplished our, our required results in here. So that's how you can use an ocean controls uh, and take advantage of the cost savings. Thank you very much. Let's do